Greetings, I'm Shad, and this is going to be a very basic follow-up video on my previous video on how magic could be affected by the law of conservation of energy, specifically in a magically enhanced jump. So if you're wondering what this video is about, please watch the previous one and you'll understand the context of what I'm talking about here. Now guys, wow, I am like blown away by the feedback you have offered. It has been amazing and I have, you've helped me learn so much more, not only about physics, but how my own magic system should be working. So I just can't thank you enough. It's just been amazing. And with your help, I think I might have come to a solution and I want to share that with you. So a really significant question that more than one person ha has actually asked me in the comment section. So everyone who asked this question, you guys are very, very sure sharp, all right? Props to you, because I hadn't even stopped to consider this really important fact. And the question was this, all right? This mass that is being magically created in my character, is the mass, when it is created, moving in the same motion as the person, or is it stationary mass, okay? Because that question actually determines quite a lot about how this magically enhanced jump would function. You see, if the mass that is suddenly present in, uh, in the character, if that is created moving in the same trajectory as the character, not only has mass been created, but kinetic energy has been created. There was no energy that was needed to be exerted on this mass, this magical mass that is coming out of nowhere, to accelerate it, because it has already appeared already in acceleration, meaning it is already moving. And it being mass, that means it also has kinetic energy. So mass was not only created, but an appropriate or the proportional amount of kinetic energy has also been created because that mass is in motion. It has velocity. It is an object that has a rate of change of in position with respect to a frame of reference, meaning just the world around it, the things that it is moving past. Now that kinetic energy has to come with the mass if that mass is going to be moving at an equal rate in respect to the magic user who is creating it. If it didn't have that kinetic energy, it wouldn't be moving with, uh, you know, the magic user as they are moving. In fact, the, the ma that would slow the magic user down. And I gotta give credit to the comma bandit and his comment that he left in the comment section to my video, Magic and Conservation of Energy, because he pointed out that what I really needed to consider was the kinetic energy, not the total energy. And his comment was made from the viewpoint that the mass did not bring any kinetic energy with it. And if it didn't, well, what would happen then is the law of conservation of momentum would take place. Momentum is the product of the mass and velocity of an object, all right? Therefore, if the mass of an object is increased, that does not mean its momentum would be increased. What would have to happen then is the momentum has to be the same. Therefore, its velocity would decrease to balance it out. So picture my character, he's jumping through the air, he's flying through the air, and he increases his mass through his magic, okay? And so this mass is coming out of nowhere, it's a, appearing from thin air, and he is becoming more massive. Now, if that mass does not appear with any movement when itself, it's not appearing with kinetic energy, that means the kinetic energy that he had in his jump remains the same. And therefore, you have the same amount of kinetic energy, but a greater mass, meaning that kinetic energy has to then be dispersed over a greater level of mass, which reduces the speed. And the result is that the object has the same momentum. It's moving slower, but it has more mass, which would equal the same momentum. And that's kind of the key. It is a conservation of momentum. Because momentum, like I said before, is a combination of an object's mass and its velocity. So you could have a really heavy object that is moving relatively slow to another lighter object that is moving fast, but they can have the exact same momentum. If one of the if the one the first object is heavy enough, or and if the other object is moving fast enough, they can still have the same momentum and actually produce the same force if it impacted on an object, another object. So by understanding this 
far better than I did before thanks to all the help you guys have given me. I need to be very specific in how this mass is appearing. Is it appearing in the same you know, trajectory and speed as the movement of my character, which means it appears with, with kinetic energy, so mass and kinetic energy is being created together, or is it being created separate to the character's speed and velocity, which would then slow him down once that mass, once he gains this additional mass? Well, I needed to think about the implications. What could be done with both of these systems? In regards to mass that is created at the same velocity in respect to the magic user's own motion, would they then keep the kinetic energy that they've gained through the additional mass when the mass is taken away, when you just stop the magic? and everything like that. Well, it's a good question. Let's look at that. So say you're in a car that is rolling forward at a very high rate and you uh, throw off the door, okay? Now, the door would still be moving forward at a certain rate, which means it also has kinetic energy. And so not only have you lost mass, you've also lost a bit of kinetic energy with that door. Is there a way to shed mass from the car and keep the kinetic energy from that mass? Well, there actually is. You throw it behind you. You don't throw in front, you throw it behind, and you will then be taking away some of the kinetic energy from that car door as you throw it and keep it for yourself. That's how I assume it would work, <laughs> all right? Correct me if I'm wrong, but that's how I think it would work. And the thing is, when this magical mass disappears, so the mass that you've created through the magic, when it disappears, the mass is no longer moving anywhere, so therefore it can't take any of the kinetic energy with it, which means the kinetic energy that you have obtained when you got this mass stays with you and now you have far less mass for this kinetic energy to uh, maintain and that would propel you much faster conservation of momentum you've lost mass which should reduce the momentum but how do you how does the momentum remain the same the same velocity must then be increased the problem that would happen then is that it kind of breaks um, the system. It doesn't break it, but it means it's way too overpowered because now you are moving at a far greater velocity, okay, and when you create the mass through the magic, the mass appears moving at the same velocity so that you could create more mass, which then increases your momentum to a massively huge level again, get rid of the mass, the mass disappears, but the kinetic energy can't go with it because it's not, the mass is no longer moving, the mass has just disappeared, so the kinetic energy would stay, which would then propel you even faster forward to main to conserve the momentum and then you could do it again and again and again and reach the speed of light all right that's cool but it's a bit too overpowered for how I want this system to work so the better way is for the mass to be considered stationary in respect to the nearest largest nearest largest body of mass in respect to the magic user. So if you're on a planet, it's stationary in respect to the planet. If you're on a spaceship, it's stationary in respect to the spaceship. And what that means is no matter what your velocity is, as soon as you increase your mass, your momentum will needs to be the same, the conservation of momentum, so you would naturally slow down. You would lose velocity because the mass is increased, but you would be at the exact same momentum that you were before because of the increased mass. Now, I actually like that. That kind of adds a cool functional element. So, you know, the, if my magic user, and it's funny, whenever you say magic user, you picture a wizard. Wizards don't exist in my book, okay? Um, I'm calling him magic user because these this is magic and these are the guys who use it. They're actually more like Jedis, but not like Jedis. Anyway, say one of these guys jump and then they increase their ma mass to a high level and then they just stop mid-jump and then drop down. And that's kind of cool. That adds a cool ability to be able to stop yourself in middle mo in mid-motion. And of course, you wouldn't be able to stop yourself completely, or maybe you could, depending on how massive you make yourself or the magic user makes themselves. So then, how do I get my super jumps though? Because uh, clearly with the previous method that I talked about before, where the mass is created in motion or in, resp in respect to the magic user, and then when you get rid of the mass kinetic energy and boom, you fly forward, and that's a big way to get super jumps and also limitless speed. Yep, too overpowered. So then yes, how do I get my super jumps with uh, this other more conservative uh, 
way of having the magic work. Well, there's a, honestly, there's a lot about the magic system that I haven't shared with you because it'll just take too long. But one of the things that I've always had from the very beginning of writing this magic system is that when you increase your mass, the, the magic user's body is augmented, all right, to maintain the same level of movement that they always could perform. So even if you they make themselves to weigh 10 ton, they can still jump their regular height and they can still move their arms around as easy in respect to their, their own point of reference. So the magic user can still keep up all the exact same level of movement that he naturally could. Now that's just one factoid among many kind of factoids that I have for this system. I make sure to cover my bases, and this is just an example of me covering my bases in one part of it in regards to mag the jumping with this magic. I think about it a lot. It's just something I enjoy. So yes, increasing um, your, their own mass, this does effectively give them a form of super strength, but it is not legitimate super strength, while at the same time it is. Because they can lift the greater mass of their body, plus the normal weight that they could lift naturally. So if your arm now weighs, say, four tons, they can lift that arm. So they're effectively lifting four tons, plus whatever they could naturally lift on top of that. So if they could only, you know, curl, uh, whatever, say, 20 kilos or, or whatever, um, they can do that on top of what their weight is. So they can't lift up a car and throw it, but they could run forward and get a huge amount of momentum because they have so much mass and just run into the car and knock it, you know, halfway across, all, all the way across the street and obviously probably destroy it completely while not receiving much injury themselves because being so massive, it takes more energy for external things to move, you know, injure them, eat, cut them, move us the skin aside to form a cut and penetrate their body and stuff like that because there's more mass resisting external force. So it's a really cool kind of super strength. So, when increasing their mass, they can still jump their normal height, their body being augmented to produce the required force, which is far, far greater than normal because they they have so much more, you know, mass, so they weigh so much more. Now, the amount of force needed to make, say, uh, you know, a tank jump, if they weighed as much as a tank, to the height of a regular person, or a regular, a regular person's jump, that amount of force would be huge, and that's the key. This is how we get the super jump. So when the magic user increases their weight and, you know, crouches down for a jump and then, you know, extends to jump and at the very you know, point, you know, just before the feet leave the ground, think about the level of momentum that has been achieved because they are so massive. It is huge. Now, the key difference here is that they gained the mass and then accelerated the mass, all right? Because remember, when the mass is created, it is stationary in respect to the planet, and so you can't create the mass and maintain the speed that you are traveling at. But like, so this, like I said, the key difference here is that they're increasing their mass and then accelerating the mass once it's increased through their own natural ability, strength of their body, the level of force it can now produce. And then when the magic is turned off, that additional mass disappears, but it's not taking any kinetic energy with it. So all that force that has been produced is now being, you know, pushed on a much, much lower level of weight, which would then propel and shoot the magic user a massive distance into the air. Because, also, conservation of momentum. They've obtained a huge level of momentum just by increasing their weight and then just doing a normal jump in respect to their own frame of reference. And then when that mass disappears, momentum must be conserved. And so if the mass is gone, the velocity is increased, maintaining the momentum. Now, once they have shot themselves in the air and they're moving, you know, arcing through the air in this incredibly massive leap, if they then try and increase their weight, well, that mass is stationary in respect to the planet, which would slow them down depending on how, you know, massive they make themselves. So you could really control your jump if you've over, you know, you know, overshot yourself. You can cause yourself to slow down just enough to land or you could cause yourself to stop. Now, would that create whiplash? No, it wouldn't, because the increase in mass is uniform over the entire body, all right? So every single cell, you know, 
gets a bit heavier in res because of the magic, and so there isn't one part of the body that stops while the rest of the body tries to jerk forward. Everything in the body would just suddenly stop, so there wouldn't be that whiplash effect. Clothing and other things would of course want to fly forward because uh, no magical effect is happening on any items being worn on the body. But that's it! I think I've got my answer, guys, alright? So, fill me in if you think I got something wrong. I hope I haven't, and... It's really cool, in fact it's much better than I ever could have thought because there's this new really awesome mechanic of stopping yourself mid-leap if you want to. And there is still the awesome super jump. So there you go, that's my solution at the moment according to my very limited and imperfect understanding of law, the laws of physics, the uh, conservation of momentum. Thank you so much for your help guys, I'm like so pumped, I want to open up my manuscript and just write in all these changes because it's just it's awesome i love it thanks guys until next time i'll see you later